like what the, what is going on here man i just literally provided it with an example of the data and the path and i have a complete data science project over here this took me like five minutes man what is going on in this world of ai so we have another very exciting thing that i want to show you guys this is basically what i wish auto gpt was a couple of weeks ago but i couldn't quite get it to work this way as you remember it got stuck in loops when it tried to create files but now we have this new thing all of a sudden, which is called GPT engineer. And if you're an engineer, then this is a must watch and you have to play around with this because this will change everything. And what it basically allows you to do is you can basically start off with a prompt, with a question, a coding related question. So in the example, they say like, hey, code a snake game. And then what it will do, it will start to work on that but the cool thing is it, it, it can write to files so it will create code files on your within your project directory and it will split it up very dynamically very neat into the various files so these could be classes functions etc depending on what kind of language you use this is really cool so in this video i'll show you how to set up how you can get started so let's get into it all right so we're starting off on the gpt engineer github repository and we are going to first clone this repository now if you are an engineer you should kind of like already know how to work with github but just i'm going to show you how to quickly like set this up then follow the instructions over here and then you should be all good to go so i'm coming to my folder over here it's, i mean my youtube projects folder over here and I'm quickly going to open up a terminal over here and I'm just going to clone the repository over here, which will basically download the folder. And here you can see you have a GPT engineer folder now over here. So I'm going to CD into that and then I'm going to open up VS Code within that folder. Now, this is not like a hard requirement. You can also do it like with another IDE and then use the terminal but I'm using VS Code over here. So I'm just gonna quickly save this as a workspace. So now I can just like easily open up this project in VS Code from the workspace folder over here. All right, so that's step one. Then we have to install the requirements. And for that, make sure that you are working in a Python environment that you can use. So let's just open up a random Python file. Let's say the main file over here. And I'm going to select my AI experiments Conda environment for this. And then what you would normally do if you have, for example, a new environment, you could open up a terminal and then have a look at the requirements over here. So it basically only requires OpenAI and Typer, which for me are already installed in AI experiments over here. But you can just like come back to the GitHub repository over here and do like the pip install r requirements.txt if you paste that in here in the terminal and run it all right so then the next step would be to create a new project basically so there's an example in here and you start off by just copy and pasting that one so i'm just going to com uh, command c command v and now i have a new project over here and now i have an idea over here that i want to try and that is one where we are going to do an experiment with a neural network. And more specifically, if we then open up the main prompt. So this is basically where you start. So uh, create a new folder or create a copy and fill in the main prompt in your folder. This is basically the starting point. So here you can see in the example, there is we are writing snake in Python and the components are split into separate files, keyboard control. All right, so I've quickly changed the prompt. So this is basically what I want to test. So create code to train and test a neural network using a typical machine learning pipeline. Use a fake data set and regression, meaning numerical data. Process it with the pipeline, splitting into train tests and evaluate the performance by creating line plots. Use sklearn and matplotlib. And now my rationale behind this basically is this is something I tried previously with AutoGPT to complete uh, to create basically complete like data science machine learning projects and not just like using gpt4 for example to get it like step by step but really create like cookie cutter like boiler templates that you can use so i'm really curious to see what this will come up with so this is the main prompt all right so now all that's left to do before we can actually run this is to export the OpenAI api key so how that works is you basically copy or type this over here say so this is on mac i will show you how to do it on windows in a bit but you start with export OpenAI api key and then you just like 
fill in your key and then hit enter. So what this will do within this terminal session, it will store this variable basically in the various scripts that will be run. Uh, if you use GPT engineer, now have access to this key. So this is a little different from using the .n file, which I typically show in my videos. You can also do that, but that requires you to change some of the scripts. This is the most straightforward one. And so, like I said, this is on Mac and on Linux. And if you're on Windows, basically the only thing that you have to do is change up export and set it to set. So instead of export, you change it to set and everything else is the same. Then you do the key. And then another neat little trick that you can do. So uh, on default, basically, this uses the GPT-4 model, as you can see right here. So that is in the main.py. But if you don't have access to GPT-4 yet, you can just like swap this out with any other model from OpenAI. So for example, you could put the GPT-3.5 Turbo model in here. All right, so now with that out of the way, we have everything we need in order to run the main.py. So that is done by calling Python main.py. Make sure you're in the root of the project and then just calling your projects, which is in my case, neural, uh, not project, neural network. All right, so let's run it and let's see what it will come up with. So it first says, okay, I need, it's going to make a summary of the areas that need clarifications. So this is the really cool thing about GPT engineer is that it starts off with like the main prompt, but then it proceeds to ask clarifying questions. So can you provide more information about the fake data set, such as number of features, size of data, target variable? Okay, let's see. So for data, let's use an example of industrial IoT data, pandas data frame, 100,000 records, use flow of a pump as a target variable and come up with other variables on your own. So then what type of neural network would you like to use? Let's just say like, keep it to sklearn pre-processing steps. So let's say data cleaning and feature engineering and scaling. So I'm just leaving in the error. So just gonna like type it out like I'm a three-year-old and see what it can come up with. Because the thing is, I wanna replace the work that I do with this. <laughs> so I can be an idiot and let GPT engineer just do everything. So it's generating, I guess the steps or function it says. So these are all like the function functions that it's, um, that it has to create. And now it starts off to write like the main.py. Okay, so this is really exciting already. So it's now actually creating the code. Let's wait for this to finish. Okay, and it's finished. So this is so exciting. So let's actually see, because I've been like watching what it was doing and it actually looks really good. But now let's, okay, so now we have the workspace folder over here. We have a bunch of Python files, which first of all, like is really amazing to me. Like if you compare that to like doing it with, with GPT, you still have like that manual process. You can ask questions, you can get the same thing because under the hood, of course, it's using the same model, but doing it in such a like automated way where you can like, you see the Python files show up in your actual IDE to me is like, man, where is this all going? Like, damn, okay. We have a main.py file. It's the general flow of everything that we have to do, like generate data, process, train, evaluate. Okay, so let's just fire up an interactive session and like, okay, because this is where the real test, of course, is like, is this going to work? And then here there's one error. And that's, I already noticed that because there's no import over here. So we can pretty easily like fix that by saying like, hey, from SK learn that pre-processing import standard scaler quickly spin up another session quickly see okay this should be everything that we need plot results okay all right let's generate the data back to this train the model and now we can evaluate the model and get the r2 and the mean squared error so let's see and we can now print those and boom we have a very solid model and a really low mean squared error so the neural network was able to capture basically the underlying formula that is in here to capture the data basically. All right, so let's try one more test because I'm really curious uh, to see how it will handle this. What I did basically is I created a data folder within like the main project and I have now provided basically the main prompt in the data set test project with a little bit more information. So first of all, I'm saying like, hey, based on if we're running the code, which is run from the workspace folder, I've basically linked to where the CSV file is. So I say like, hey, 
here's the data set that we're going to analyze. So it's going two steps back into the data folder and then bike share CSV. Then I've provided it with the structure of the data, which is just loading the data frame into um, loading the data frame and then doing uh, running.info and then just copy and pasting the results. I just like put it in here to see if it will work this way. And now I've provided uh, a little more like in-depth instruction on how to handle the data set because based on what the previous model, so to say, was asking, I've provided it with some additional information here already. And now I say we want to basically compare three machine learning models and compare them using R2 and mean squared error. So let's see what happens if we run this. Okay, and I see that it uh, put this all into like a nice little function, but I just gonna, I'm just going to run it line by line to see what we got going on over here. So first of all, like the data path, it like took up on that and we can like instantly load the data. So that's really good. So now we pre-process the data, which is in this case just doing, so what is it doing? So it's okay. So it's going to drop some columns, X, Y and scale it. Okay, so now it does all in one. Pretty neat, pretty neat, okay. And now we're going to train the models. Let's see if it actually works. Okay, it goes really fast. And now evaluate the models. This actually worked. Okay, this is really, really cool. So we have the R2, like 70, 60, like 80. So the random forest is really the best one over here. But what the, I didn't put like any effort into this. And we now, okay, so this is a pretty straightforward data set, but we have a, a random forest with a score, R2 score of like 80. It's a completely like properly structured piece of code. This can open up like so many possibilities. Like again, this is just like another step towards creating like fully automated pipelines of setting up projects. We've now basically removed the human bottleneck of like typing into ChatGPT, copy and pasting it, figuring out which file to put it in and then loading it um, into the main file, for example, which which is done over here. So this second experiment with the data set test took, took probably like five minutes to set up this whole project. All right, so that is GPT engineer. I'm very curious to see and to hear what you guys are going to try out with this. So let me know in the comments what you will be doing with this. You now know how it works. I'm definitely going to continue experiment with this, see what I can come up with. And then in the meantime, please, if you got value from this video, leave a like, also subscribe to the channel. It will really help me out. Also make sure to check out the links in the pinned comment right below this video. There will be two links that could be very interesting to you. So the first one is for the data freelancer mastermind. Now this is for you if you want to launch and scale your freelancing career in data, but don't know where to start. And the second one is a sign up for my newsletter. So this is really for people that are serious about learning data science and artificial intelligence and want to stay in the loop of all the things that we're doing behind the scenes. So go check those out. And then I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.